20% of construction companies that just opened will close their doors within their first year. Over 50% of these companies will be closed within three years. This is just the stats for people trying to get into construction and trying to open a business and make something for themselves. Now, if you made it past the three years, congratulations. You have been successful are lasting more than 50% of the people who believe they could have a construction company. Construction is not as easy as you might picture it. It's very nice when you have a job and you get to do what you love as a side hustle. It seems like productive, but it's more into the business than just doing the work. One of the most important things is how do you make your company recession-proof, hard time-proof, and even being able to see the future a little bit. You gotta practice on certain things, but some of those important ones is do not hang yourself into the one thing that you think it makes the money. You have to be diverse with your work. As a new construction, as a plumber, as you know, concrete guy, flooring, finishers, drywallers, that's putting all your eggs in one basket, that one thing, the only thing you know how to do. If you're a drywaller, you're either the guy who hangs the drywall, but you're not the guy who tapes it. That makes you very, very vulnerable. Why I say this is because not always that specific task is going to be required while economy is not as busy as it has been for the past you know, six years or so. You're gonna have to diversify your work into other areas of what it is that you do. For my example, I started with new construction. Then I said, well, shit, it's not money here. The highest paid guy, and now remember, it's over 20 years ago before the comments go like, well, that's not what you make now. When I started doing electrical, I was making like 525 an hour or some, something like that. I know that's not what they make now, but that's, that was back then. The highest paid guy in that company was making 20. And that was, that was the guy in charge of all of us. I didn't see a lot of futures. So I started going into, you know what? The old guys that are working by themselves must have a clue of how this works. So I went and started fixing old houses, knob and tube and rewiring them and working with fuse panels and changing them into the new panels with the you know typical breaker and doing all of these things. And then I started noticing that those guys were getting paid a lot more than the guys in the new construction. But then I was introduced into commercial then those guys were making even more money than fixing the old stuff. And then I got introduced to industrial. Then I said, well, fuck, these guys don't even work and they're making a lot of money. So I myself started learning all these different electrical part of the trade, but they're all different. Industrial works at one speed, commercial works in a different one. When you're on your own fixing all problems and you're running to others. As you start diversifying with, with what it is that you do, you start finding that when you're not needing in the new, you can go into the renovations, for example, or you can start going into small commercial jobs or medium sized commercial jobs, or you can help in the industrial side, either with piping, wiring, connecting motors or programming some of these motors or doing all of those things, you start becoming needed. And that's what really makes you uh, recession proof or bad time proof. You also need to understand that even though what it is that you're doing right now is working for you, it might not work for you six months down the road. So you gotta be very open-minded to new ways to do what you do and new things to be implemented into what you do. I started as an electrician and became a general contractor 10, 12 years down the road. It was just a simple fact. It was an easy transition because I already knew everybody on the trades. All I needed to do now was hire them. So I started hiring little by little. And as I started hiring framers, drywallers, plumbers, HVAC, and all of these guys, then it turned out that I had a pretty strong team and I was able to do multiple jobs at the same time. So now I'm not only making money from the electrical I was doing, I was making some money on every single other guy who was going to work at the same time that I was doing it. So when I didn't have any work, I was still continuing to make money. That sustained the business. And as the business was growing, I became a little more understanding of the business. As you're making your business more problem proof, you yourself will start becoming the problem. You cannot run every aspect of your company. You can oversee it, but it's very, very, very hard to just say, I'm going to run it all. That's how a lot of companies go into the ground. So you need to get out of your own way 
and let people help you with the tasks of the business that don't really deserve your time. When you grow and you grow too fast for companies that disappear, the first two things that happen is they get into money fast. And it's a saying that says when it's too fast, it disappears fast. The other one is they never had time to learn over finances and managing their money. So that got them into problems, either with the IRS, not being able to pay their vendors, the time concession of your money from when you finish the job to when you get the money, then they start getting behind on their personal life and then eventually move into getting behind on the business side. It's just because you're trying to oversee every step of the way instead of trusting that work into others. None of us can be in business by ourselves. Yes, I know it's guys out there that are a single man band and they're a single man show. Great for you. But you can only do one job at a time and do it well. If you're doing three, you're behind on two. That's just a simple fact. It's math. You can't be in three places at once. I'm not saying your company is going to disappear. What I'm saying is you're only depending on the amount of hours you can work versus the amount of hours and 10, 15, 20 guys can work for you. When recessions happen, the first place where you're going to see it is on the top. So make sure that as you're implementing systems into your company or into your business, you start having diverse type of customers. You have low end customers, you have middle end customer, and then you have high end customer. The way I myself get to know when the economy is either making a shift or something is slowing down for some reason, like this year, Due to elections, certain area of my business is slower than others. Everybody says it's an election year. We have to see what happens. But in a regular year, if the economy is going to make a shift, it's going to make a move, the first people to stop spending money are the ones that have money. And why I say this is because normally wealthy people understand how money works, how it's made, how it's produced, and how it should be spent. They don't need to watch where they spend their pennies, but they prefer to invest or hold the investment before spending on their self, or themselves or on their own homes or on their own flips or on their own rentals or on their own houses or on their home vacation homes. The reason they do this is because that's not a necessity. It's not an important thing. They have better places where to put their money. When I start seeing my wealthy clients shift and start lowering on what they're doing in an annual basis or in a monthly basis, then I know that's a trickle effect that is going to come down to my clients in the middle and the clients on the bottom. They're all going to feel the same at one point or another. What makes it recession proof is that at one point or another, they are all going to need you. That's the beauty of construction. We, we cannot be overtaken by AI. They cannot come and do our jobs. They still get plugged toilets. You're just not going to get to charge $250 to go fix that. You might have to drop on your numbers just like you did for your, for your lowest end client. You got to have an umbrella. You got to have and a way to cover every single client in the spectrum because you never know where that business is going to come from and that's what is going to make you recession proof or problem proof if you have any questions about how not to let your business get f-ed, leave it in the comments if you guys find the video helpful please subscribe and i hope to see you guys in the field